Okay, hello, good morning, everybody. I'm Sabine. I was an intern with COIL until two weeks ago, and I mainly worked on pool payments and integrating pool payments within uh, SPSP. And this is what I was planning on talking about, and then uh, I was asked if I can also talk a little bit about e-commerce. I'm not a big expert on that, so if anybody else is in the room that knows more about e-commerce, feel free to jump in and give your opinion. Uh, I'm probably missing things that are already out there that I just don't know about, so just go for it. Okay, so when I uh, buy something today, let's say I want to buy this awesome Rick and Morty sticker, I have various options to check out. I can use PayPal, at least at this webpage. I can use Amazon Pay and I can use a credit card. And I'm German and in Germany we also have a big thing uh, where you use like a debit processing where they basically pull money out of your bank account. Um, so those are the options I have right now. But it would be cool if I could use like any kind of uh, coin I have lying around that I won somewhere or got from somewhere. So it would be great if we could have Interledger to pay because it gives us flexibility. I can just use anything um, to pay for my Rick and Morty sticker. And um, for the merchant, it's also easier because he doesn't have to integrate with all those like PayPal and Amazon Pay and credit card and all those things that are out there. It's just one thing and it should work. How would this look like? So I did a little bit of imagination here and um, thought maybe instead of having this PayPal window that pops up, I have Interpay, which doesn't exist yet. Interpay is something I came up with. It'll pop up and it'll let me choose what kind of currency I want to use. It will also give me a link on the bottom um, with my invoice details for my little sticker, um, which is an um, SPSP pointer that I could click on and I could see what I have to pay and to whom I'm paying, what I'm paying for, and just continue and done. Cool. Another option would be if I was allowing this um, company uh, that sells the sticker to just pull money out of my wallet. I would like get a little pop-up window where it shows me these are like this is the amount, this is the currency, um, they want to get paid in, um, this is the scale, um, they only want to get paid in once because I don't, I don't pay for a subscription here, I only want to pay for one sticker and be done with it. I can choose my currency again on the bottom, continue, done. What kind of technologies are already out there um, that are going towards that direction? Also, what kind of documentation is already out there? So SPSP is already spec'd out. Um, right now, it includes push payments, and it's a work in progress. Let me just recap real quick how a push payment via SPSP works. So, um, there's Alice, and Alice wants to send money to big company, and she'll use SPSP to query a payment pointer at the server site, which is hosted at big company, and um, she'll get the ILP address in secret, and this is what she uses um, to pay big company using MoneyD. The technologies and the implementations that we already have is the ILP protocol SPSP and then the command line interface ILP SPSP and both work together with MoneyD. What we also already have is Ben's invoice SPSP server. So when you run that, you can actually create specific SPSP endpoints that um, contain information about one payment, like an invoice, it will say, or you can put in a reason why you want to pay it, you can put in an amount, and once this amount has um, gotten to this endpoint, um, the invoice is considered to be paid. As of recently in Chrome Stable, there is the possibility to um, have Interledger within Chrome payment request. There is a tutorial out there on how to and make that work. It was not working for me yesterday because I couldn't uh, the testnet uh, get to start. So I'm sorry about that. I wanted to demo that. Um, yeah, I talked to Austin about it and I hope the testnet is, uh, I will be able, soon be able to connect to the testnet again. And then there's also work in progress. I'm currently working on creating new specs. Basically, I, str I try to strip out all the um, 
push payment stuff from SPSP, uh, from the SPSB specs, such that uh, it only contains this um, exchange of information. Like I get the IP address and the secret and I connect and it doesn't contain any information on how to do payments anymore. And then there's two specific specs that deal with push payments and with pull payments. And uh, it's still called SPSP invoices. Uh, this can change, it doesn't matter. So I highly encourage anybody to read that and also to um, comment on that um, because I would really like to get that done. And like I said earlier, what I worked on mainly during my internship was pull payments and this is how pull payments could look like uh, or it does look like, I have an implementation for that. Um, so let's say um, in this case Interpay, this uh, cool payment handler company, is running the SPSB server and Alice is a client of this uh, Interpay and she can use Interpay to create pull payment um, endpoints and um, in this case big company would not run the server but the SPSB client. Uh, when Alice create, uh, checks out, she creates the SPSP pull pointer with Interpay and big company will query that to get the information to connect to the, um, uh, to connect into pull. And um, in this case, it's not in, on connection. When the client connects, it's not that the client sends money, but the client pulls money from the server. So basically, um, who's sending and who's receiving is re reversed from how push payments work. I updated the IOP protocol SPSP implementation and the IOP SPSP implementation to work with pull main payments. Those are still um, also in, hidden in PRs. So I also encourage you to look at that and try that out. And I have a demo of the whole thing. Hopefully it works. Okay, so I already have MoneyD running locally. Like I said, test network is not working for me right now. I'll start my ILP SPSP pull payment server in debug mode so, such that you can see some of the logs and uh, see that it's not just all spoofed. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is to create a pull payment pointer. This is the one I'll be creating. Um, I'll, it's a post request to the SPSP server I just um, started. Um, I'll let it, uh, or I set it up with an amount of, what is that, 100,000. Um, it's in XRP and uses the um, asset scale six. So it's a, how much is that? That's like one, is that a one XRP? 0.1 XRP, exactly. And uh, this can be pulled every minute for 10 intervals. So 10 minutes long, I can pull 0.1 XRP. Um, and after that, it, it won't be refilled anymore. And um, I have no cap. And what that means is that when I miss out on one period, I can then still pull in the next period. So you can imagine if something, if it's bigger than a minute, then maybe um, you don't want to allow somebody to pull after, let's say, an hour. So that it, let's say a merchant has time, uh, the time of an hour to pull, and after that he just misses out. This would be a cap of true, and cap of false is even if this interval has passed, it just keeps on accumulating the amount, and you can pull the full amount. Okay, and there's, an, there's authorization there such that not anybody can just create a pull pointer, but it's, yeah, it's not very secure right now because it's test. Okay, so here's my pointer. And I can now go ahead and query that. So um, I have not pulled anything yet, um, not a lot in total and not during this interval and I still have the full amount available. So let's just pull something. It 
done. Um, one thing to mention here, I'm pulling, like my money D is, uh, is using XRP uplink with um, the asset scale of nine instead of six. I set one up with six. So when we query again, yeah. So I uh, pulled 100, not um, 100,000, but this, this, like I said, it's a, uh, um, they're, they're using different asset scales. The pointer's in a different asset scale. Yeah, good. <laughs> in one case, you're talking about uh, micro XRP, and the other case, you're talking about nano XRP. And so 100,000 nano XRP are pulled on one side, and that means that on the other side, 100 micro XRP have been picked up. Thank you. <laughs> This is that, and one thing I also um, implemented is that you can use uh, an offline generated uh, endpoint to pull, so d you don't necessarily have to create the pointer first. You can, let, in my case, you, can, you create a JWT that includes all the information um, that the pointer would need, and you can, like somebody could be somewhere without Wi-Fi and um, just create that on the phone, show it to a merchant, and the merchant ca could pay um, instantaneously. So I have one right here. So this is, what, this is what the information you would need. It has basically the same information you would need to create it online. It has an amount, it has the interval, cycles, cap, uh, asset code, and asset scale. And it needs to be signed with a secret that the server knows. So it, the, you cannot just send any kind of JWT. In this case, it's test again. So to copy that. And yeah, I get an error. It doesn't exist. But I can pull from it. So I was able to pull from an offline generated pointer. Of course, there's still a lot to do uh, to get to like my vision that I pointed out in the beginning. First of all, I would really like to get those specs uh, through and um, approved. Um, there's a discussion on the forum on how the pull payment and the invoice um, spec should look like. So I encourage you to check that out. And then there's also already the PRs in the um, RFC repository. We need something like Interpay, and there's already any pay that is working on something like this. At least this is how I understood it when I checked their web page again. And there may be somebody else out there who's working on that. I don't know, but please feel free to educate me. We need some kind of um, software development kits um, such that we can have these nice pop-ups. Um, basically, what I did here, I looked at what Stripe is doing, and uh, Stripe has very nice and easy um, instructions on how to get that working with your web page. So we need something similar for the ILP-enabled solution. And then in the Google Chrome payment request, the, it's working with pull, uh, push payment right now, but it's not working with pull payments yet. So it would be cool if we could get that in there somehow too. And of course, for this whole um, premise of flexibility to work, we need way more currencies than there are in the, in connected via Interledger right now. Um, because otherwise, like the whole premise of it adds to flexibility is just not really true. I invite you to start a discussion on how we may get to a better e-commerce experience using Interledger. And please ask me any questions. So a question um, around subscriptions, so uh, recurring payments. Mm -hmm. Is it that um, each one has to be authorized, or could you have authorization over a series of... Oh, yeah. Like so payments? the question was whether you have to authorize every each and every pull payment, or whether you can authorize a series of pull payments. Here, the sticker example is maybe the nicest uh, um, way to explain that. So there is this uh, notion of cycles, and this is one, so you can only pull one time. If you boost that to anything else, then you get to the subscription model. So you could do infinity cycles. I mean, there is the question of how secure this would be if you just allow somebody to infinitely pull. But you could also go back and just delete your pull payment pointer, and then the entity that is pulling would just not be able to pull him in. They would probably kick you out of the subscription. You can only pull the amount that is 
in the bucket and once it's gone you cannot pull again during that period and that's also um, set up in a way that not two people can connect at the same time and pull the same amount at the same time. Yes? I'm sorry, uh, if I'm missing something, uh, what, what, what is the essential difference between pool and uh, just, just payment? Pool payment and just payment? The question was, what is the difference between push payment and pull payments? This is the push payment. We have the SPSP client and the SPSP server, and the client connects to the server, gets the IOP address in secret, and then uses this to send money to the server. So client sends money to the server. In the pull payment case, it is the other way around. The client, again, queries the server to get the IOP address and the IOP uh, secret, but on connection, it doesn't send money, but it pulls money. What, what, what is the main use case of the pool payment? One, I think one of the main use cases was mentioned just before, the subscriptions. So you could set up like a Netflix subscription, um, but instead of using your credit card, they would, you would give Netflix a pool payment pointer and they would pull the um, fee monthly or whatever they prefer. You can get your call subscription using pull payments. But, but we, can, we, we can do it with just push, push payment. But there's more interaction, right? You would have to push every, let's say for the Netflix subscription or the call subscription, you would have to push every month and authorize this payment every month, whereas in pull payments you authorize it once and the business that wants to receive the money can just pull as long as the pointer exists or as long as it doesn't, uh, like the cycles don't run out and it is invalidated. So it seems like push is an actual transfer of value right now and pull is the assigning of a voucher allowing them to take value from it. Yes. Okay. For an e-commerce payment where you buy one thing and then you leave, is the main uh, advantage of pull payment versus push that you can uh, be offline? Yes, this is the main advantage, yes. I was wondering what your implementation was actually written in. My implementation is written in the JavaScript. <laughs> yeah. Just want to say I think this is this is really cool stuff and really appreciate all the work that you've done on putting together the spec, working it over with the changes people have suggested, and then um, implementing it. So I think this is, this is really great work. Thank you. Was there one other question? Yeah. I was just going to ask, what, what's missing from payment handler to do the... I would not know. <laughs> the payment method spec, the, the payment method definition. That's all. We needed to find what a payment handler that supports pull actually does. We, it, it, it's a data model definition. It's, okay. It's, it'll be really simple. Based on what you've done, implementing Interledger into the web payment stuff will be dead simple. It's, cool. It's awesome. I, I would propose that you just merge your specs now, and if people don't I like can, them, they can submit new pull requests. Right <laughs> if you accept it right now, I'll merge. <laughs> what time is the governance talk? <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.